din ng CI, may mga applicants, kaya lang parang hindi pumapasa. So, ano na lang. Let's pray na madagdagan tayo. Nag, di ba nag-aano naman kayo? Ah, nag, nagko-conference? Baka pwede nating i, ano yan, i-voice out na medyo kailangan ninyong, um, kailangan namin madagdagan. <laughs> di ba? Kasi katulad ko, ako na lang ang CI sa endoperyo. Uh, kayo, kayo ang uh, iniisip ko eh. Dahil baka hindi ko ma kayo ma-accommodate lahat. So, uh, parang um, magiging ano yun sa inyo. Parang form of justice. Hindi naman siguro. ba diba? So, ganun na lang siguro ang ano natin. Gawin natin. So, wake up early para ma-accommodate namin kayo. Ang hirap kasi pag alanganin na yung oras tapos bigla kayong dadami, no? Nandun kayo lahat. Doon tayo mahihirapan. Kasi anyway, nandiyan naman ako. Six, six, uh, before seven, nandiyan na ako. Eh. Pwede na kayo mag-start siguro. Tapos tsaka nalang kayo bumaba pagka mag ergo na. ba? Diba? What do you think? Pwede naman yun, ba? Diba? So maybe, I think we can start na. Mamaya na yung ating sermon. Okay, so after the discussion, uh, last time, di ba, of our review to have an optimum access preparation, um, then it's time for us to determine naman the working length, di ba, in our, uh, before we start our access preparation. And so our next topic would be how to determine and what would be the challenges, any mga pwedeng difficulties that might arise during working length determination. Of course, we have to be very extra careful. Uh, same, uh, same way we did during access preparation, in order for us to avoid accidents on the next procedure. Okay, na change ba yung yung slide? Okay, now so uh, the course outline uh, should answer the following objectives that after the discussion, you should be able to identify the different methods, ano ba yung mga different methods and indications uh, during working length determination. Kasi iba-iba yan eh, which would, would fit our case. Then next is, second is, you should be able to discuss the importance of both the cleaning and shaping and uh, be able to explain how to determine when this have been achieved. Uh, third is, you should be able to describe the different techniques for shaping canals that have irregular shapes and those with round, pwedeng may oval ang shape, are glass, or pwede rin bowling pin. Pwede rin, some have kidney bean shape and others merong ribbon shaped canals tayo. Next is, to be able to describe techniques such as uh, step back or crown down. So how do they differ from each other in preparing standardized or flaring preparation? Kasi iba-iba rin yung preparation. So it is also expected of you to distinguish when uh, you have an apical stop. What is apical stop? If you have apical seat, what is apical seat? And open apex along the apical terminus. So that you'll be able to manage, ma-manage ninyo ang each preparation for abjuration. Kasi these three are very important for you to be able to know paano nyo i-objurate yung, how are, you able, how, how are you going to objurate this, ano, your case or the canal. And uh, last but not the least, you should be able to characterize the difficulties of canal preparation in the presence of anatomic uh, abnormalities, which causes complete uh, debridement uh, difficulty. Okay? Yun ang, yun ang tendency kasi eh. So to start with the topic, let us review how the healing process occur along the periapical area. I hope you can see this area here, di ba? Ito yung periapical area natin. This is the tooth terminus, canal terminus. So according to Kronfeld, the healing process occurs in the tissue immediately adjacent to the point where the pulp was severed. Dito daw sa area na to. Okay? 
It is therefore important to retain the vitality of this tissue. Kailangan ma-retain yung vitality of this tissue in order to make a he uh, the healing possible. Siyempre, kailangan yun, di ba? Or else, pwedeng magkaroon pa ng trauma or inflammation. Then, uh, according to Grossman, if there is an apical rarefaction, may pathology condition doon, uh, an apical access must be obtained. Dapat makapasok din kayo doon in order to reach the entire periapical tissues. It was stated also by Pratt and McDonald that there are certain factors which can influence the choice of method to determine the appropriate, ano yung appropriate working length ninyo to be performed. So it can be the quality of the radiographs, if the radiograph is indistinguishable, that's one. Okay, then if there are overlapping anat uh, anatomic structures that um, the hard tissue, it, it would be very hard to identify the apex of the roots and the anomalous positions of the root canal foramen can also be a factor to consider in choosing an appropriate working length. So now let's be reminded of what is working length. Diba? So why is there such a thing as working length determination? What are the advantages or significance of taking an accurate working length? Okay, so working length determination is the procedure of identifying the measurement can you see this? I don't know if you can see the arrow I'm pointing at. And then this one, di ba? Yan yung working, ito yung area. Uh, yan. Okay. Identifying the measurement of the distance from a predetermined coronal reference. This one. Usually, sa incisal edge, pag anterior, at saka caspal naman, tip sa posterior T. To the point at which canal uh, preparation and obturation should terminate hanggang dito sa area na to. Okay? So that is going to be your working length. And you need to determine that. So in order for you to establish uh, the correct working length, a fixed reference uh, point is uh, should be put in place. So what is a reference point? So it is the most stable site on the occlusal cusp, cusp tip or incisal edge. So this point is used throughout, throughout the ano, uh, canal preparation and obturation. So this is where the occlusal and the incisal terminal points should be referred. It has the following features when it comes to your reference selection and stability. So take a look at the chart. Can you see now the chart here? So it says there that you should select, piliin nyo daw yung reference point that can be easily visualized. Yung nakikita nyo kaagad during preparation. And then which are usually located at the incisal edges of anteriors and buccal cusp tips of posteriors. Okay? So the advantage of having an accurate working length would be, first, it serves as uh, the criteria for achieving successful endodontic results. Then it will also minimize post-operative pain. And then, of course, your file and any instruments will be properly placed in the canal during canal preparation. Kasi makukonfine lang siya within the depths to which the canal filling may be placed. And thus, of course, it can prevent overextension of the file. Now, what if uh, you encountered an erroneous working length? Mali-mali yung working length ninyo. Which can either be an over or, or an underextended working length. Paano kung gano'n ang mangyari? So, okay. So, definitely, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this will compromise the outcome of the treatment from the beginning. If you will have an erroneously short working length, maikli siya doon sa dapat na working length, the result would be leaving an uncleaned and unfilled canal. Doon lalo na sa terminus, apical terminus. Okay? Doon sa apical region. While an 
erroneously working length naman will be will lead to ano uh, over uh, instrumentation or overextended obturation causing uh, post of operative discomfort now um, it should be known that canal instrumentation and obturation should end at the apical constriction ito sa area na yun, as you can see is dun sa arrow dapat hanggang dun siya or the what we call physiologic foramen in order to achieve the following that um, of course if you have if you will have this it will prevent a uh, periapical injury and injury to the periodontal ligament as well to avoid extrusion of root canal filling material so that there is no apical transport of infected palpal tissue yung mga microorganism will not be lodged outside of the canal system okay next is to achieve an adequate compaction of the root canal filling against the canal walls and so that no infected tissue rem remnants within the canal will again get out of the apical area okay may case tayo before we have a case before i i forgot the clinician you know um I think that was last Wednesday yata yun, na when we look at the radiograph, sabi ko sa kanya, that's go, that is going to be our lecture next week. Uh, we can see there na, sino nga ba yun? Ah, si Miss, ano, Miss Castro, na parang medyo, uh, parang shortened pa yung working length, pero her sister, um, was telling us na painful na yung ano, pagka medyo umangat pa yung ano. Ewan ko kung si Ms. Castro yun. Okay? So, take a look at the picture here. So, the root canal system could have pos uh, possible three-dimensional variations. Merong three-dimensional uh, variation siya uh, clinically dapat. ba? And acquiring knowledge about these variations will help, will help you to determine how to get the correct working length. So let's name them or identify the different variations. So we have the dimensional variations due to resorption. Okay? Maybe due to uh, pwede rin change of, uh, uh, magkakaroon din ng changes due to age. Then pwede rin to trauma during orthodontic movement, nakakaroon ng resorption when there is periradicular pathology and uh, periodontal pathosis. So take a look at the picture here. This is an actual picture of a premolar. Diba? Showing that the file has overextended from the apical foramen. While in the radiograph, same tooth yan, diba? apical area of the tooth. While in the radiograph of the same tooth shows a file confined within the canal system. Diba? This condition frequently happens because the root tip height is not equal in all sides. Kaya... Um, when uh, a good a good uh, parang indicator that you have already reached the uh, correct site or of on where the um, working length should stop is maybe if the patient will tell you oh mm, medyo masakit na okay yon ibig sabihin na nasa periapical terminus ka na so uh, uh, two millimeters is still acceptable kasi nga in this case as you can see Tamang-tama pa yung ano niya dito, but here, nakalabas na siya. So maybe it should stop here. Diba? Para, para magbumaba pa yung ano, yung uh, ating, ano, yung ating, uh, what's this? Yung ating uh, file and our working leg. So next would be, we have here also the, Ayan. Can you see the, ano, the... So the picture shows here an ideal feature of a root apex. So let's, num uh, let's number the tooth apex or the radiographic apex one as one. And then the major or the apical foramen as two. And the apical constriction or minor foramen, uh, which has the minimum diameter along the canal system as three. Okay? So the distance between these three parts vary as the tooth matures. Okay? So the apical foramen deviates from the apex in 50 to 98% of the teeth. Nag, nagbabago siya ng location as the apical foramen matures. 
Okay, so in almost all teeth, uh, nagde-deviate siya talaga. Ang incidence would be 15 up to 98%. So this deviation averages from 0.3 to 0.6 millimeters. But this deviation can be as much as 3 millimeters. Pwedeng bumaba pa siya ng hanggang dito. Diba? Pwede pa siyang mag-move further away from the root apex. Okay? So, the distance between the major and the minor foramen would be 0.5 uh, millimeters in younger people and 0.7 in uh, older individuals. It gets further as the individual age because of physiologic deposition of dentin along the cemento and uh, cemento dentinal rather uh, junction or maybe due to uh, peripical irritation. Uh, of course, the dentin will react to the irritation. So, nakakaroon ng dentin deposition. Okay? So, here, the internal morph uh, morphology of the apical constriction has been classified into uh, five main types. As you can see here, I think five main types. Okay? Um, first, ito yung different constriction na you, you can uh, encounter dun sa apical area. So first, we have the single constriction, this one. Okay, next is the tapering constriction. Uh, that after the minor diameter, uh, diameter, there's a narrow passage leading to the major foramen. Then the other one is uh, the one with multiple, ito, multiple constriction. Diba? Constrictions, and dami niya. Can you see the ito, upper part? And then the fourth one is the constriction positioned naman parallel to the major foramen. So this is the second illustration at the same, uh, dito sa right side, no, ano natin, right, uh, sa right of the three pictures. And then we have, the last one is this one. Um, the bottom picture are those uh, minor constrictions which are blocked or congested. Then this one, the other pictures naman, dito sa right most, shows an apex with multiple openings. Ito yung mga openings niya. Can you see that? Ayan, openings or, or foraminas. Uh, that's how complex the root apices are, as you can see. So this is a picture uh, of a root cut in a horizontal. Pahalang ang cut niya, okay? You can see large um, lateral canal being pointed by the blue ar ito, itong arrow na to, itong area na to, Pointed siya nitong white arrow pala, hindi naman siya blue. Okay? Um, leaving the mischial canals and uh, exiting on the distal uh, surface of the mischial root. Okay? Can you see that? Yan yung ano. Then take note of the lateral lesion. Ito siya. Take note of the lateral lesion, this one. Yan. Along the opening of the ano, um, lateral canal as pointed ito ng white arrow natin. Okay, can you see that? So, the left picture naman shows the uh, apical portion of the root canal system which presents the greatest number of ramifications. Ito yung mga ramifications niya. Okay? Where you can see the extensive branching of the apical canal. Uh, known din ito as an apical delta. So, the right picture is a root apex with root canal filling. Ito. This is the root canal filling. Okay. Uh, short of the actual root leg. Uh, the histologic evidence of hard tissue formation is seen immediately after. After the, ano, after the root canal filling. Itong area na to. Okay. Marked with blue, ar uh, blue arrow. So the cellular formation from the periodontal ligament adjacent to the root canal filling material can be marked. You can see. Diba? So note also the cementum formation. Ito, ito namang red arrow natin. This is the cementum formation which yun, is marked now with red as in, in the in, uh, uh, internal aspect of the apical foramen. So working length can be determined in several ways. Ibat ibang ways on how you can get your working length. So what are these methods? Which of these methods will be indicated for certain conditions? So there are actually two methods where we could choose 
we have the non-radiographic method, which can be done by doing the digital tactile sense. Diba? Ayon, isa yon, digital tactile sense. So this can be, uh, this method actually can be a problem, most especially pag narrow ang, ang canals niyo. So it creates a resistance immediately agad before it can reach the apical constriction. Pag masyadong narrow yung canal, the tendency of the file is to get binded na doon kagad sa dentinal walls. Even without uh, getting uh, or uh, ma ma without reaching first the ano, apical constriction. So this procedure is also problematic on immature apices, causing the file or the instruments to go outside of the canal. So uh, the apical periodontal sensitivity is a non-radiographic working length determination procedure based on patient's response. But it has disadvantages if the canals have necrotic pulp. There might be an instance that uh, the instruments spreading mag go beyond the uh, apical constriction. Diba? Isa yon, na without feeling the anything. Diba? Lumabas na siya. While in cases of an inflamed pulp naman, wala pa dun sa ano, uh, it hasn't reached yet the ano, the Epical area, tapos may feeling of sensitivity na kaagad. So sometimes it all, this also has a disadvantage. Then the other one naman, the non-radiographic uh, method, one of the uh, uh, method without uh, using a radiograph would be the paper point uh, method. So this is the most reliable so far among the three non-radiographic methods. So, uh, okay, this one naman, all you have to do is just to get inside the canal and then uh, if used in cases of open apex where the uh, apical constriction is lost, maybe due to perforation or a resorption, so a moisture or blood in the apical part of the paper point will indicate that you have already passed beyond the estimated working length. Okay. Actually, this method can be used as a supplementary procedure to other methods. Now, what about the electric uh, or electronic apex locator? So this is a method using a device to measure the working length by electrical conductance. So this method is useful for curved canals, yung mga nakakurved yung canals, those with previous and... Uh, existing unclear periradicular radiographs. Hindi nyo makita yung apical area, so you can use this because the device will help you find its way to the, and it will warn you that you have already reached the apical area. Okay? So this this one is ano, is useful in determining the uh, uh, perforation, uh, perforation along the canal walls. Okay? So that's one one good thing about this. So there are certain limitations of using electronic apex locators. So you cannot use the, the EPT or this one on tooth with metallic restorations uh, because metals are good conductors of electricity. Same with the presence of saliva because wet areas can conduct electricity. Same on tooth with immature root apex. Okay, this would give short readings due to the presence of immature nerve fibers. Dapat medyo aware kayo sa ganyan because it might be, ano, this question might be asked in the board exam. So the other uh, working length uh, determination technique is the radiographic method. Okay, so this technique has a dark side. So the quality of the image can affect the accuracy of the image interpretation. If a situation is encountered where there are two superimposed canals, halimbawa may dalawang magkapatong na canal, so you can take a good advice here. Uh, I can suggest now you take two individual radiographs with different uh, sizes of instruments, yung file. Maybe you can insert uh, file size number 20 dun sa isang canal, and then file size 25 on the other canal, yung bigger, bigger canal, okay? Or maybe you can use two different files. Yung, yung isang file is a K file, then the other one 
can be a headstrong file or an H file. For you to be able to see, dapat alam niyo, you can identify which canal has the K files and the, which of the two canals has the H file. Okay, and then you can take, uh, you can apply na the slab technique by uh, directing the beam from the mesial or maybe distal horizontal angulation. So uh, the canal which uh, follows the direction of the beam, kunyari nag, nag, nag uh, mesial ano kayo, uh, shift. So the canal that follows the, the mesial side would be the lingual canal. Okay, so these are the techniques that you can do if you have encountered uh, difficulties like ito na may superimposed uh, superimposition of the canals now the next one is the ingles the most commonly used so let's discuss now the different ito na nga yung techniques natin of working length determination by way of radiographic method so first we have the ingles technique so in this technique the preoperative radiograph remember if you can still remember this is just a review. Yung preoperative radiograph ninyo is used. That's why you need to get, you, you have to secure or, or you have to get a um, uh, film jacket for you to keep those uh, films, exposed films. Kailangan nyo talaga para mas ma-preserve, di ba? Maging safe yung ano ninyo. Because your preoperative radiograph is very useful. Uh, for you to calculate the estimated working length. So you need to measure there the tooth length image. And then after you have measured the tooth length image, you are supposed to deduct 2 millimeters from that measurement. So why 2 millimeters? Because what the 1 millimeter uh, that you have deducted will serve as your safety factor. And the other one, the other 1 millimeter is for the presence if in case uh, your uh, radiograph is distorted. Okay, parang pa, just to play safe. So this aims to preserve the apical constriction. That's why you have this 2 millimeter deduction. So the distance that should be preserved from the major to the minor constriction. So this is uh, the time that uh, your initial apical file is identified. So after mong ma, ano, you need to get the, the correct initial apical file so the inserted initial apical file should fit into the apical constriction and the canal size is checked to avoid overextension of the ano of the uh, succeeding files so this is how you determine the size of your canal uh, to get the size of your initial apical file so if you have an uh, if you have a narrow canal ibig sabihin noon masyadong manipis or uh, narrow, very, very small yung, yung, ano, yung canal. So you can start with your number 6 or number 8. Okay? Tapos if you have um, an average canal, uh, pwede kang mag ano, ng uh, 10 to 15. Diba? And then uh, pag uh, average canal yon, pagka medyo wider yung canal, you can choose... Uh, uh, file size uh, 20 to 25. Pag medyo malaki talaga siya, you can choose um, file size 30 or 35. Okay? But be sure, it won't bind. Hindi siya magbabind doon sa kanal. But rather, doon lang siya magbabind sa apical constriction that it will create a dead stop. Meaning to say that the, the, the tip of the file will no longer overextend outside of the uh, apex of the um, canal, okay, apical terminus. Now, you need to take the second radiograph after you have inserted your IAF with, a, with uh, an estimated working length, okay? With the IAF having the silicone stops positioned naman doon sa reference point na dapat very stable din yung reference point niyo. Okay, so a good example for this is if you if uh, you, your TLI or your tooth length image is 26 for your uh, central incisor or tooth number 11, then you have to subtract first 2 millimeters from it, giving you, um, it will give you an uh, estimated working length of 24 millimeters. So once the second radiograph is taken, then the new working length is calculated na by adding or subtracting the distance between 
uh, the instrument tip and the desired uh, apical ter uh, termination of the root. Okay, then the new working length is calculated by adding or subtracting the distance between the instrument tip and the desired apical termination of the root. So you, you, you will add if uh, you think na kulang, di ba? And then you will subtract if you think that you have overextended. Okay? So yun, yun yung uh, technique na uh, using this kind of uh, uh, radiographic method. Next is we have another, ano, another technique. So we call it the Wayne's formula. So this is effectively used for ca uh, in cases with uh, root resorption. Okay, so after you have taken or measured the exact working length, um, as you can see in the picture, if you have a good uh, apex without any resorption, one millimeter is good, is enough. But if you think na meron kang bone resorption but with an intact root area, you need to add uh, dapat mga 1.5 pa. Okay? Kasi uh, to play safe. And then, but if you have both the bone resorption and the uh, root bone and root resorption, then you have to add two millimeter to two millimeters more subtraction. Because always, um, what's this? Always uh, assume that uh makar ng progressive resorption as you treat uh, the root area, the, the, the tooth. Okay, so we also have here the Cutler's formula. So the Cutler's formula is done by determining naman the average distance between the minor and the major diameter of uh, the tooth foramen. So for young patients, it is usually again a 0.5, whereas in older patients, it would be 0.6 millimeters. So the technique or the procedure uh, starts by locating the minor and the major diameter on preoperative radiographs. So estimate uh, canal width on the radiograph. If the canal is narrow again, you know, I think I explained ko na, you can have it 10 or 15. Well, if you have an average width, you can you can use a, a, a file, your initial apical file, either 20 or 25. And then pagka masyado ng malaki, it can be 30 or masyadong maluwang. Or if you have a wider canal, 30 or 35 size of file. Yung iba gumagamit ng 40, eh, eh, uh, baka na, na feel niyo yung bind within the walls, hindi doon si apical constriction. And please do not ano, anticipate na you will have a tag back if you are using the file. Kasi the tag back cannot be felt if, if you are using the file. Kasi masyadong mabigat ang file. Okay? So wala yun. Basta Ang importante, may dead stop siya. Pag na-feel nyo na doon sa working length, nag-stop na siya doon, ibig sabihin nun, that would mean that the, the file you inserted inside is good enough to be your IAF. Okay? Now, so we have here the next one, uh, the radiographic grid. So, your radiographic grid is a formula naman which uses a millimeter grid. Okay, so it's it's in the picture. So the millimeter grid is super um, superimposed on the radiograph, as you can see also in the picture. It means na ipapatong yung grid at instrument sa radiograph. So this uh, procedure will not uh, will not need any calculations. So each grid represents or measures one millimeter na. So each grid repre uh, one millimeter per ano no per box yung pinaka ano niya uh, as you can see parang graph so but this technique might cause inaccuracy ren if the radiograph is bent uh, during radiographic exposure because it will occupy or the image will have a different measurement okay so the last method which uses the uh, traditional radiograph uh, film would be the endometric uh, probe. So here you need to insert uh, a diagnostic probe. Can you see this one? Ayan, diagnostic probe. Uh, then uh, 
you have to take a radiograph. The uh, disadvantage of this is only uh, the, uh, the minimum size of file that can be used with this. file uh, cannot be seen sa radiograph sometimes it, it it would be very hard so uh so it can't be used on tooth with narrow canals okay so that's it for this ano, for this kind of ano, for this kind of technique now we also have here the uh the not so common seroradiography Okay, so this is a technique also under radiographic method, but it won't use the traditional radiograph uh, file. Instead of a specialized technique, which, which uses a photo-electrostatic process. Okay, unlike the old or the conventional method, which makes use of wet processing. Diba meron tayong developer and fixer? But this time, if you will use this, only electrostatic uh we use the we use here a photoelectrostatic uh, process. Okay, uh, we do not use chemical substances to produce an image. Another method which uh, do not use a um, a chemical processing procedure, but under radiographic method also is the radiovisiographic technique. So how is it being done? So an equipment with sensor. Diba? As you can see in the picture, we have sensor there, the monitor, and the microcomputer component will be used to form a digital image. So, wala tayong film dito. We have two types of di uh, digital uh, radiovisiography. Uh, the radiovisiographic, of course, please take a look at the upper picture. You can also see here the phosphor imaging system. Now, this is how it works. So, the radiovisiographic is formed by a digital image represented by the dimensionally distributed set of disconnected uh, sensors and pixels. While the phosphor imaging naman, system captures the image on a phosphor plate. Ito yung dalawang technique and converted into a digital format. So it has a monitor to view the image as you can see the lower picture then, both of which are using monitors. Diba? Okay, so as we have discussed on our previous topics, there are challenges along the way. Now, the question is, how do we overcome such challenges? First, it is but prudent to check and, uh, of course, work in, work in making the path of the file insertion free of any obstruction. Dapat walang obstruction. So the lingua ledge, as you can see in the picture, okay, lingua ledge is found on anterior teeth. So it should be removed, okay? Uh, it is removed to reach the depth penetration to the cementodentinal junction and prevent defliction of file. And for the posterior teeth naman, sa lower, ano, sa lower picture, uh, the cervical ledge, ito yung cervical ledge natin, or bulges should be removed to locate naman the missed canals kasi pwede may additional canals and to prevent the binding of or maybe defliction of instrument in the coronal third of the canal. So ito, tatanggalin natin. This one should be removed also. So here, so the following changes are observed after you have attained a straight line access. Kasi you will at, uh, achieve a uh, straight line access after removing those, ano eh, those, uh, obstruction, di ba? So it can change the working length measurement after obtaining this straight line access. So it places the file in a more upright position, hindi na naka-curve or naka-deflip, naka closer to So it eliminates also coronal pressure on the working length instrument. And it will enhance the penetration of the uh, a file until it reaches the apical terminus or your CDJ. Now, we have also here the silicon stops. Okay, the silicon stops. So, it is used to maintain the working length. So, the proper, uh, I mean, the, the stopper is positioned at a right angle along the reference point. So, it should maintain its position 
while doing the canal shaping to prevent overdoing of the said procedure. Dapat wag niyong kakalimutan yung silicone stops. And it should always touch the reference point. So another challenge here is when the tooth uh, that you will be treating has a scalloped or uneven root resorption. I hope you can see this picture. Scalloped, di ba? Or uneven root resorption. So this signifies a three-dimensional resorption na which complicates working length determination. So if you have this kind of root apex, uh, then the creation of an apical stop must rely on clinical, uh, I mean, clinician's judgment if the case can still be treated with root canal therapy. So the experience of the clinician will count a lot. To be able to familiarize himself with the existing condition and to come up with the correct approach. So the use of translation when inserting the file can also help to be sure if you are still confined nasa ano ka pa kung or nasa loob ka pa ng canal or you have already overextended it away from the canal space. Okay? And the choice of, of course, diagnostic radiograph technique to get the correct decision, uh, an electronic apex locator are unreliable in this kind of uh, uh, procedure. Uh, okay? Those with root resorption. With, of course, widely open APCs. Yon. And then, again, let's, uh, let me remind you, uh, how do we get the working length of a tooth with apical root resorption? First, the coronal most point. What do you mean by the coronal most point? Which exhibits sound radio density must be identified. So from the apex, you go coronally. Try to check radiographically. Which of this root, anong part ng root ang nakikita nyo na meron pang radiodensed area? Hanggang saan yung radiodensed? Ibig sabihin, uh, radio-opaque pa. Kasi pag medyo radiolucent na, ibig sabihin nun, resorbed na rin yun. Kahit meron pang shape ng root, but that cannot be used as your uh, parang starting point for the, ano, for the measurement of your uh, uh, apical terminus. Okay? So this position is used as the new radiographic apex, yung radiodense area. From this location, dun sa radiodense area, the working length is established by measuring 1 to 2 millimeters coronal, papunta sa coronal area to that point. So in cases of extensive, talagang sobrang lala na nung resorption, uh, you have to uh, ano, uh, uh, deduct 5 millimeters or more corona, uh, going to the coronal area. Okay. Depende, uh, it will depend on how severe the resorption is already present. Okay, it's either 2 millimeters, pag medyo okay pa, but 5 millimeters from the point of the radio dense area going to the coronal area. Hanggang dun lang yung uh, preparation ninyo dapat. Kasi nga, there might be a possibility that it, uh, the, uh, no, will, uh, the resorption will still progress. So, in order to avoid... Um, the your feeling to be outside of the root area as the resorption uh, progress dapat mas ano pa malayo pa kayo doon sa ano yung feeling uh, sight ninyo okay so therefore the success of the approach to working length uh, determination is established in two things on two things rather so first the accuracy of the radiograph exposed with the file in place inside the canal. And then second is the file stability. We move from its original position. Okay? Yun yung ano natin. Now, with the use of a paralleling technique with geography, it will predictably shift the roots and the uh, structures from one position to the other. So which can aid, it will help a lot in accurate working length determination. Since each canal can be seen separately. Kasi makikita nyo both. Diba? Yun, yun, yun yung uh, the good thing for this uh, para, uh, ano, a shifting technique. 
So although it takes time, and of course, yung sa paralleling technique natin, it will take time and experience to develop uh, this reliable technique. But once mastered, it greatly simplifies working length determination, ensuring that the quality of the root canal treatment can be enhanced. Mas mapapaganda. Okay? So if we are taking two working lengths of a non-vital tooth with a periapical radiolucency, it is but crucial to initially establish the working length as close as possible to the canal exit or short of the apical foramen to prevent exit of the microorganism outside of the apex. Dapat yun ang, ma, yun ang ma, 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 what's this, ma, attain niyo. That might cause, kapag ka, uh, uh, na-move yung microorganism outside of the apex, there will be bacterial regrowth and multiplication along the periapical area. So same thing with the highly irregular resorbed root apices. So overextension of files can potentially damage the root anatomy, which can cause apical inoculation of microorganisms and debris at the periapical tissues. So can you see the illustration? So the first picture here, sa left, shows a maxillary lateral incisor. And then the second picture naman shows the same tooth, which was uh, radiographed after 12 months, diba? after re-examination. So the healing is stable, as you can see here, but not yet complete. Then the third picture with the same tooth showed healing already. As you can see, meron na siyang fibrous scar tissue. Same, same tooth yan. Then, here is the post-treatment outcome of a root canal treated tooth. So based on working length philosophies, di ba yung kaninang na-mention natin, that the finished root canal procedures should allow, dapat pag after yung mag-root canal uh, treatment, it should allow apical healing. The, its main aim is to cause periapical healing by deposition of cementum at the root apex to ensure a complete biological seal with, of course, regeneration of, uh, of the periodontal status. So look at the black, yeah, uh, uh, the black part dun sa picture natin. The, uh, that black image is, ano, is the root canal filling uh, inside the canal. So you can see microscopically na maganda ang healing, I mean, yeah, healing along the periapical area. Diba? O wala siyang anything na na, 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 na cause. Um, okay, so we must also be reminded that, uh, of course, disagreements, maraming disagreements will continue even though marami na tayong advanced current uh, root canal treatment, diba? Yung advances natin. Uh, it has been rendered, it has rendered already a high rate of clinical success. Unlike previously, maraming, maraming failures. Uh, so, um, with this, uh, while the choices of treatment can differ from one case to another, but still, it would seem to be dependent on how the access to the end of the route has been prepared. And the clinician's skill, of course, it counts a lot expertise and experience as well. These are the concerns that would validate positive outcomes in majority of our cases. Okay? So, dapat talaga practice. Another, uh, yung dental advancement demands a greater degree of uh, tooth retention. Unlike before, yung traditional treatment natin won't give a high, uh, hindi sila nagbibigay ng high percentage of success. So this context will take continued efforts on our part to identify new techniques pa and materials to achieve the goals of a successful treatment on a predictable basis, meaning the uh, assurance of a successful outcome. So this expectation can only be achieved by establishing an evidence-based and problem-solving approach diba, to the treatments that imitates a bi uh, biological basis for the therapy rendered. So these are disciplines that emphasizes the practical application of findings. We keep on uh, doing our part, uh, experimenting also, 
and then take note of the success uh, successful materials that we that we used diba those uh, best available current research uh, researches ito yung pagkukunan ng knowledge natin at learnings okay so the following should be carefully weighed as you go through this context so one major philosophy is to retain all procedures dapat within the confines of the group yun yung first philosophy na before pa we've been practicing for us to be able to have a good or a successful treatment but however repair uh, by fibrosis scar formation is um ngayon so far is our main aim kasi different materials won't give us uh, uh what's this parang uh, a percentage a good percentage that the tooth will have uh, a good regeneration regenerative uh, outcome laging fibrosis scar formation yung hinahanap natin so most obturation material kasi available today possesses no re uh, regenerative potential even up to this date wala talagang laging ang healing is fibrous scar so studies have demonstrated the negative effect of gata perca yeah meron yung negative effect even the calcium hydroxide when it goes out of the uh, tooth area it can cause epical or periapical irritation therefore uh it would appear logical that uh extrusion of obturation further irritate the periradicular tissues and therefore the outcome would be delayed healing so pushing the obturation material beyond the uh, the apical constriction causes periapical chronic inflammatory response so can you see now here the picture so this is the root canal filling material and of course can you see this itong area na to you can see here na meron siyang chronic inflammatory response kasi nag overextend outside itong material. So, nagkaroon siya ng irritation, nagkaroon ng uh, CIR or chronic inflammatory response. Diba? Here you can see no cementum is formed. Unlike yung sa una nating picture, you can see that there is cementum formation. So, after the initial apical file and the working length has been determined, so let's discuss now the different filing motion techniques. So, but before we tackle on this, we have to be reminded that files have different usage. Diba? Nalilito kayo dun eh, diba? Files are used to enlarge a canal during serial prep. Yung apical canal. We call it serial preparation. Here, uh, during serial prep, we use the four sizes of files sequentially. Sometimes, we overextend it to, we extended it to uh, five sizes of file. If the, uh, if the canal is narrow, but it has a thick wall, dentinal walls. So, pwede tayo mag-extend up, up to the fifth file. Then, it can also be used for shaping of the canal during the step-back procedure. Diba? Yung step-back technique natin. Filing, filing here is to shape the canal. So, we also use here for files. Diba? Sequentially. But this time, since we are after the preservation of flaring, uh, uh, of the flaring shape of the canal, uh, the step back files uh, will be used here. So with different working lengths na. So to retain the uh, original conical shape, diba? So we will start to deduct one millimeter every time we change our file to a larger file, okay? So we also have here, we also use files for circumferential filing, diba? So this is done to remove the ledges naman. This is the main purpose. So ang serial prep, is filing for uh, apical enlargement. Ang um, step back is for canal shaping and enlargement, slight enlargement, so that it will uh, mimic the original uh, shape of the canal. And then the circumferential filing naman is uh, used or another type of filing wherein uh, after the step back, we want to have our walls uh, possess that glassy smooth uh, uh, walls, diba? So, yun naman ang circumferential filing. And then, we also use file for recapitulation. Kanina, meron akong uh, tinanong, so, why do we do recapitulation? Kasi every time we do procedures, we should know the purpose of this procedure. Hindi yung gagawin lang natin. That's why we kept on forgetting this procedure kasi 
we don't have that uh, parang um, ano to hindi siya nag imbibe uh, hindi, hindi you do not understand what you are doing the main purpose of this procedure is uh, important because it has a purpose and what is that purpose so why are we doing this yun ang importante doon okay so your recapitulation naman ang pinaka magandang uh, ano doon is to maintain the patency of the uh, of the canal when you say patency dapat kasi the canal should be um clear uh, cleared siya of any debris the, the debris that debris should not flood inside the canal system so recapitulation for uh maintaining the patency of the canal circumferential filing is to uh, produce a glassy smooth feel of the canal walls uh, initial apical file uh, initial apical, uh, serial uh, preparation is to uh, enlarge the apical filing uh, for the purpose of enlarging the apical part, uh, canal and for the i know uh, step back is to um, shape the canal and slightly enlarge it uh, to its original shape okay can you see ito yung mga purpose ng filing natin now, nasa na ako. So, let's start with our first uh, filing motion. As you can see in the picture, we have here the twiddling motion. So, it is accomplished with a reciprocating back and forth, clockwise and counterclockwise rotation of the instrument inside the canal with uh, light apical pressure to move the file deeper. Medyo iaano mo siya, ipupush mo siya a little, uh, a little, with a little effort. This filing motion is used during serial preparation and step back technique para magkaroon siya ng konting effect doon sa kanal. Okay? So, uh, the other uh, filing uh, motion technique is the rimming motion. So, it is the clockwise uh, cutting rotation of the file. So, the file here is rotated clockwise at 80 to 360 degrees to enlarge the uh, canal space while uh, filing technique is accomplished by placing the file in the canal and pressing it laterally lang while withdrawing it along the path of insertion to scrape or plane the ano, the canal walls so here uh, there is a uh, very little rotation on the out uh, outward cutting stroke so here is the circumferential filing so your uh, uh, by the end of your biomechanical preparation, the final filing procedure is circumferential filing. On it in a directional manner sequentially, against the mesial, distal, buccal, and lingual walls. So this filing technique will remove the ledges created by the step back. Uh, filing motion. Thus, it will create a glassy smooth feel. I hope you are listening, ha? Kasi this is very important talaga pagdating sa ano natin, sa board exam ninyo. Ako kasi hindi ako nagre-review kasi uh, I don't know how, uh, I did not attend the review before. Noong nag, nag, uh, after I graduated, nag-self-review lang ako. So I don't know yung mga techniques nila sa review. Kasi for me, mahaba ang endo eh. Hindi ko siya kayang i-digest. So, yun. Yun lang naman. So, anyway, here, the anti-curvature filing. This is another type of filing then, di ba? So, uh, the anti-curvature filing is advocated during co uh, coronal flaring procedure. Pagka gusto mong i-flare yung coronal area, you have to use this anti-curvature filing to uh, preserve the focal wall. Okay. I hope you are looking at the picture doon sa slide natin. So, it is being identified as the area uh, where thin dentin walls are present, diba? Uh, in the treatment of molars. This filing technique kasi is needed to be, able, uh, to be performed if curved canals are present. So, here is the reason. So, canals, canal walls are often not centered... Uh, in mesial roots, uh, dito sa mesial roots natin of maxillar and mandibular molars. Instead, they are located closer doon sa uh, forcation areas. Can you see the, here, the picture ito? Mas closer ang canal dito sa uh, forcation areas. Mas thin ang walls dito. So here, the gates glid and drill can be used directionally in an anti-curvature uh, fashion. 
type files nyo to selectively remove the dentin from the bulky wall, which is called the safety zone. Dapat naandito nakadirect sa area nato. This is the area where uh, you have the safety zone. This is the danger zone, this area here. So when you say anti-curvature filing, you move your file towards this area. And then by moving it against this area, do not, do not place it here because it will cause strip perforation. Okay? You need to protect the inner focal wall, which is considered naman as your danger zone. Okay? So we have, uh, while uh, the recapitulation filing is done with the use of sequential files during canal preparation. So it is accomplished by taking a smaller file to the corrected working length. Okay? Why? To loosen and agitate the accumulated of the inside along the canal after which we can all already flush it with the aid of your irrigating solution. So it is performed between each successive uh, enlarging instruments. So regardless of the cleaning and shaping techniques, this procedure prevents na the pushing of debris beyond the apex. So thereby, it will prevent the plugging of, of or plugging for, uh, or plug formation of canal debris into the canal area. So next is, so after working length determination, uh, apical canal preparation may commence na, di ba? So using your stainless steel hand files along or a combination of night tie files and stainless steel files. So the aim is to produce an apical canal shape which tapers smoothly. So the apical enlargement is done by using files with sequential sizes. When you say sequential, dapat sunod-sunod, Okay at the established working length to increase the size of the apical preparation. Usually, the uh, apical part of the canal should be enlarged to at least four file sizes, larger than the first file, to bind at the working length. So the largest file used to the full working length is the master apical file. It is fourth. The size of this file depends upon the size of the original canal and the canal curvature. So this can be the fourth file or it can be extended up to the fifth file depending on kung gaano kakapalin walls. But the smallest acceptable apical preparation is usually equivalent to uh, size of uh, the file number 25. Okay? So frequent irrigation and recapitulation is essential here during this procedure to prevent uh, uh, blockage on the apical area. So here... Uh, next is, uh, after the apical canal diameter is determined with the master apical file or the MAF, we will now proceed with the canal shaping. Uh, and where are, uh, I mean, we need to uh, proceed with uh, here after determining the a good MAF na. And there are several techniques for this procedure. So the commonly used technique is uh, in shaping the canal is the conventional step back technique the one you are using so it started it will be started by uh, coronal orifice flaring diba if you flare mo muna konti with the use of a gauge gliden and then larger files after the master apical file will be used successively but shortened by the standardized increments uh maybe uh 0.05 or 1 millimeter per change of file sequentially so this is stepping back procedure is performed up to the fourth file so as to uh, produce um, adequate flare and balance the apical and middle thirds of the canal. Again, recapitulation is not missed during this time in every change of file. But this time, instead of using the previously used file, again, ha, may I remind you, instead of using the previously used file as what we've been doing during the... Um, Ano to, anong, uh, serial preparation or apical enlargement, this time we will only be using the MAF okay? Okay? Uh, for recapitulation if you will be doing the step back. Now, since this is the largest file, that reaches the working length. So if you want to maintain the patency, do not use the previous file, uh, but rather only the MAF. And then again, copious irrigation has to be performed during this procedure. Okay, so 
uh, we also have another technique, which is the step down technique or the crown down technique. So this is advocated for cleaning and shaping procedures as it removes the coronal interferences. Ang coronal interference muna yung una natin, contrary to the previous technique where it starts apically, yung enlargement, yung enlarging ng kanal. But here, we start doon sa coronal. So this procedure provides coronal taper first before it shapes and enlarges the apical canal. So this is done by flaring muna the coronal one-third of the canal using a gate sclid and drill or rotary files of greater taper with the size of 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 10. Once the uh, coronal flaring is achieved, Ito na, a coronal flare can also be initiated by a large file such as number 70. Uh, it is placed in the canal by doing a watch winding filing motion until the resistance is encountered. Then the working length can be established at this time. So the process is repeated sequentially using, a smaller, using smaller files na until the apical portion of the canal is reached. Then this time... Uh, you'll be working now on the uh, apical canal. Ito yung procedure naman in your crown down technique. Now here, if we have the conventional, ano, if we have the, wait. Okay. Then next is, uh, wait, akala ko kasi may nag, ano eh, uh, nawala yung, ayan, wait. Dito na. The next would be, Ito ng passive step back na tayo, no? So, uh, so the passive step back technique naman is the modification of conventional step back technique. Para rin siyang step back natin. But here, uh, after the apical diameter of the canal has been determined, yung apical diameter, yung area natin during the serial prep, the next instrument is determined upon its binding contact. Hindi na siya every one millimeter. But rather, yung susunod nating file, dapat magkaroon na siya, it should have a binding contact with the dentin. Okay? It's dun sa wall. This technique does not follow the sequential size of the file. Rather, it follows the, lar the, the next larger file. Kunyari, yung last natin, MAF natin is uh, 35. Ang nag-bind sa kanya is uh, 45. We will ano na, skip na the 40. Kasi hindi naman siya nag-bind doon sa dentin wall. But rather, since number 45 binded doon sa wall, so doon tayo magkukuha ng next file. Okay? Kasi this one is a good way in preventing, uh, uh, in following talaga the, the shape of the canal. Pinafollow lang niya yung shape ng canal. So yun ang difference between a passive step back and a conventional step back. Okay, yung conventional, uh, we follow the sequential files. If your MAF is 35, your next file would be 40. But if you will be doing the passive, if your uh, MAF is 35, uh, the, uh, the the next file that would bind doon sa, can you see the picture? Ito o, oh. yan. So can you see here? Ayan yung ano niya. Uh, 1 millimeter ang, ang distance per file. But here, malalayo yung iba. Uh, the next file would be the, the file that will bind doon sa dentin. Okay? So, balance force technique naman is a concept of filing instrumentation. Filing technique naman natin. By filing, uh, by, I mean, placing the file to length, and then a clockwise rotation. Can you follow the picture? By 90, yun yung first picture natin. By, uh, you will turn the file. You will rotate the file by 90 degrees. Okay? That's the first picture in the slide. Then as it engages the dentin, this is followed by a counter uh, clockwise rotation at least 100 degrees with apical pressure. Dapat may counting pressure. You need to apply apical pressure to cut and enlarge the canal. Okay? Then the degree of apical pressure varies from light pressure with a small instrument to heavy pressure with a large instrument. So the clockwise rotation of 90 degrees pulls the instrument into the canal with an apical direction. So that's the third picture. Then the last one would be rotation then 
ng file uh, from 270 degrees up to 360 degrees counterclockwise. Cutting rotation forces the file in a coronal direction while uh, cutting it circumferentially. So the process is repeated until the corrected working length is reached. So kindly check the illustration or picture in the slide. So here, uh, let me just recapitulate the following general considerations to be reviewed as reminders uh, of the principles in biomechanical preparation. So initial canal exploration is always performed with uh, smaller files. Laging dun tayo si smaller to uh, gauge canal size, yung, even the shape and the configuration. Always be reminded also that copious irrigation is used before and after change of instruments in the canal. Uh, coronal flaring, which is a form of passive uh, step-back technique, should be done with the use of hand instruments to facilitate the placement of larger working files. So you have to do this to reduce uh, yung procedural errors such as loss of working length and probably pwede rin magkaroon ng uh, ano, uh, parang canal transportation. And likewise, um, it also has an advantage of preserving the original shape of the canal. So the debris is loosened and then tin is removed from all walls of the on the outstroke of recapitulation or with a rotating rimming action at or close to the working length. And then instrument binding or dentin removal, insertion should be avoided. Dapat laging maluwang ng konti yung inyong um, instrument. It will definitely create wall scratches pag laging um, uh, ano siya, nagbabind sa dentin walls. Okay? And soon, it can cause dentin wall fracture. So, files are also teased to length using a watch winding or a twiddling action. So, this is a back and forth rotating motion of files. Approximately a quarter turn between the, uh, the thumb and your forefinger. Parang uh, inaano nyo siya, uh, nirorotate nyo, nyo siya. You rotate the file using your thumb and forefinger as it continually works the file apically. Habang pababa, okay? Then, rimming is defined as the clockwise rotation of the file while uh, it, cuts, it cuts large dentin walls. That's why uh, this filing technique is no longer encouraged. Before before we we do the ano the what's this the uh, ano to yung yung filing technique namin uh, nagluream mo na kami. But uh, this time it uh, this reaming technique or procedure is already dis discouraged na because it causes scratches of the dentin walls. So filing is defined as ito filing is defined as the uh, no, as placing the file into the canal and withdrawing it along the path of insertion. Uh, papasok nyo and then para nag, nag uh, ano ka lang nagfa-file, di ba? To scrape the walls. And circumferential filing is used for canals to remove ledges by placing the file into the canal and withdrawn in a directional manner against the all the walls. Then, uh, small, long, curved, and round canals are the most difficult and tedious to enlarge. So, they require caution or caution uh, during um, preparation because they are the uh, most prone uh, dun sa loss of uh, ano natin, length and transportation. Then, anti-curvature -curv uh, filing is done to prevent uh, over-enlargement of curved canals uh, by... Uh, by Attempting the file uh, files to straighten the walls, uh, leading to procedural errors. Diba? So, dapat maiwasan natin yon. And another reminder to all that endophiles are disposable instruments. Okay, please. They are dis uh, disposable instruments um, and overused files can cause regrettable problems, forcing or... Uh, locking or binding of files uh, into the dentin walls produces unwanted uh, ano, torsional force which causes, as you can see in the picture, the uh, cyclic fatigue of file. So it is this, uh, the stress, strain, and uh, deformation induced in um, a material or dun sa file natin by cyclic loading uh, producing a rupture or breakage of the material. 
di ba? Yun, yun, yun yung usually na nangyayari. Uh, so how do you evaluate if you have achieved an optimum biome uh, biomechanical preparation? So what are the criteria for you to determine? So these are the criteria. Okay, so first is that you have cleaned and shaped the canal optimally after cleaning and shaping procedures. So the canal should exhibit a glassy smooth walls and there should be no evidence of dentin, ano, uh, what's this? Merong tayong dentin uh, fillings, di ba? So dapat uh, wala yun, or debris or um, irrigant in the canal. Then this is determined by pressing the canal again, uh, I mean the pressing the MAF against each wall in an outward stroke during circumferential filing. And optimum shaping of canal is evaluated by assessing the canal taper and identifying the apical outline. Ano itsura nung ano nyo, apex niyo. So the apical design is identified as an apical stop. When there is complete barrier at the apex. Can you see the picture there? Then when there is complete barrier at the apex. While an apex with an incomplete barrier, yung second picture natin, letter B, di ba, is identified as an, apical, uh, an apex with apical seat. And it can be um, an open apex when the apex has no barrier, yung third picture natin. Di ba? Wala nang barrier at all. So the apical design can be evaluated by placing the MAF to the corrected working length. If it goes beyond the working length, the apical configuration is open. If it stops at a corrected working length, the uh, configuration is an apical stop. When smaller files went beyond the working uh, length, the uh, apical configuration is a seat. Okay? Now, so let me leave you with uh, this quote from Lou Holtz. Um, an American former football coach and television analyst. Um, ability is what you're capable of doing. Okay? Motivation determines what you do. And attitude determines how well you do it. Okay? So ability refers to our skills, our knowledge, and capabilities. So it represents what you are capable of accomplishing based on your inherent talents and acquired expertise while motivation is the driving force behind your action so it determines the goals you pursue and the efforts you put into achieving them what is important would be your attitude it plays a crucial uh, role in determining the quality of your work a positive attitude can enhance your performance productivity and overall success in any task or endeavor that's why it is listed last. Though you have the ability of doing such a thing, meron kayong abilidad para gawin, still, uh, the kind of attitude will motivate you to have it done. Okay? So, we have here for the readings to enrich your knowledge on these topics. And then... Um, we have here again uh, the discussion, which is equivalent to your uh, 10 points. Jusha next week, uh, September 26. And then, of course, thank you. Um, uh, please don't leave the ano, hour meet because I will check the attendance and I will have some few reminders. Pa. Okay. So for a while, I will, um, an oras na, 4.20. Uh, nasaan na ba? Stop. Presenting. And uh, may I ask if you have questions? Kung wala, ako muna siguro. Ah, sinabi yung aking mikondi ko ako eh. Wait. Um... I noticed kasi, okay, may, uh, may I announce kung, uh, who, are, who among the students have already discussed their cases for you to, ano, uh, please take extra more efforts na uh, mag-discuss na because uh, we are running out of time. 
So the following students have already discussed their uh, cases and they can start na their uh, endodontic treatment. Uh, for section one, we have um, Mr. De Leon, Leo Vejildo, Miss Enero, Miss Febidal, Miss Gonzalez, Miss Jose, um, Miss Palad. For section two, uh, Miss Closa, Miss uh, Mr. Flores, Miss Gonzalez Del, and Miss Mogamadu. Okay, so there are. Sino pa? The binito po. Nagdiscuss ka na ba iha? Opo, nung summer doc, tapos nilagyan niyo na po. Ay, iha, iha, uh, uh, hindi kita mag-gradean ng ano mo. Kasi, di ba, uh, I think I have mentioned before na you need to rediscuss your case kasi, um, ano siya, uh, graded. So, yung case discussion niyo will be graded and it will be included in your grade dito sa ano natin, dito sa ating, ano, uh, Ano to? Um, sa inyong final quiz. Because you will have your final quiz and uh, uh, the start, uh, dun sa time na nag-discuss kayo up to the case presentation. So your case discussion will be equivalent to 30 points. So kailangan kayong mag-discuss. Bali po, Dok. Kahit po meron na po, uh, nalagyan niyo na po yung evaluation form namin. Wala, ng... hindi siya. Hindi siya. Uh -huh. yung, kasi yung, yung, yung case discussion ninyo dati is para dun sa requirements ninyo. Itong case discussion na to is different because uh, you will be graded here talaga accordingly doon as as part of your quiz. Kaya si na, si na Mr. Ano, actually tapos na nga sila eh. But still... Uh, they, ano, they repeated their discussion, si Mr. Flores, si Ms. Uh, Gonzalez, and si Mr. Flores. Ay, ano, uh, Gonzalez, Flores, and uh, sino yung isa? Kanina, nakalimutan ko. Uh, Flores, Gonzalez, and Mugamadu. Um, Mugamadu. So, kailangan nyo talagang i-repeat siya. Okay, good. Yes, Ms. Kumal. Uh, dog, um, uh, the case discussion will be only on the day we were picked from the. No, that would the be the, that would be the case presentation already after you have performed the the, the ano the procedures. This oh, time, so? the first part would be case discussion that would only include uh, uh, your how you will discuss uh, the part one. I think okay. I have. Already, uh, ano to, included that in your topic one module. Yes, Doc. Uh, so uh, we can reach you anytime uh, yes. during yes. the weekdays for that. Uh, yes, I thought you have uh, you already uh, understood what uh, um, what I I mean all of you that yes, Doc. Uh, I